if I insert it as a new layer there, I can draw right over it. This is good for virtual learning because kids can actually see the textbook with you. You can draw on it just as you would if you were up in front of the classroom doing it on your document camera. Making engaging lessons, making your kids fall in love with math. You want to hear your kids saying, how can I do this at home? Or I want to finish this lesson. Can we stay on for a couple extra minutes to finish this lesson? Push your students to love learning, make it fun. Here's how you're going to get that done. And it starts with you. So here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to the Math Dojo. I'm Michelle, for those of you who don't know me, I am a middle school math teacher from Los Angeles. I'm really excited because today I'm gonna start this series where I'm bringing you everything that you're going to need to teach math remotely. So if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you are notified and you won't miss a future video. I make videos for students, parents, and teachers interested in sharpening or extending your math skills. If you're a teacher that wants to use technology or embed videos into your lessons, or if you're a parent who just needs resources, or refresh your lessons to help your child at home. So that is why I've made this channel to help parents, teachers, and students with math related content. If you guys are excited, just like I am, go ahead and hit the like button and let's go on and jump into how to teach math remotely in 2020. So first things first, we're going to talk about what materials that are going to help you be successful at teaching a math lesson to your students. So the first thing that I use is a laptop. So the laptop that I use is just the one that my school has provided. It is a MacBook Pro. Um, you can use any laptop. You just need a tool to communicate with your students where you can access apps. Another thing that you're going to need is an app so that you can communicate with your students. The app that I use is Zoom. Now the third thing that I purchased and it is a huge um, reason why my math lessons are so successful is a drawing pad. So this is the drawing pad that I have. I know um, there are a lot of different brands out there. Sorry, excuse that. It's a little dirty. But um, this one, this one is from XP Pen. Um, I will link one down below. I got it off of Amazon, but this is amazing. It has buttons on the side, little shortcut buttons. Um, I do not use the buttons on the side just because of the app that I'm going to talk about next. But yeah, this was a really good investment. XP Pen is a really good brand uh, and it's, it's a lot cheaper than the other brands that I've seen recommended and it hasn't given me any trouble. I have nothing but good things to say about this. And with the drawing pad, it came with this pen. Um, the pen comes with a little stand, so when you're not using it, you can either stand it up like that or lay it down this way. It also comes with, because it's a surface where it's very touchy, it comes with this um, glove that you can wear. It has two fingers so that when you're writing, your um, skin is not touching the pad, So it's and it's very comfortable. Um, it also came with a little cleaning cloth um, and it came with a couple of white gloves that have these um, like textured dots on them. It's kind of rough on one side and very smooth on the other. Not exactly sure what these are used for. I don't use them. Um, however, it came with the kit. So that is what I'm showing you. Um, so there's also little tips on the inside. There's like six eight um, refillable tips, I guess you can call them, um, in the um, pen stand. So I thought that was pretty cool uh, that it came with that. So I think the price for this, I don't, I don't want, I want to say I didn't pay more than $40 for this. Um, I know there's some that range over a hundred um, and there are a few that are less than 40. Like I said, this one is really good. Um, I definitely recommend it. Um, the next thing, you are going to need a drawing software. I spent a lot of time researching the different drawing softwares. The one that I found that is the most user-friendly with the most features, 
I like using Krita. Um, Krita is a drawing software that you can use for iOS and PC, so it works for both. It's just really easy. I'm gonna um, throw a clip in right now where you can see it in use. All right, so I just wanted to show you really quick. This is what it looks like when you open Krita. Um, you can easily just start a new file this way and create a custom document. Um, I set up my settings so that my screen comes in black. I just, um, the students like um, the writing on it better, just the brightness of it. Um, so the colors are over here. They're um, just the colors that I use frequently. So I can quickly change back to the colors that I always use. If I wanted to open a new screen, I just come to the new button, I click create, and um, sorry, my, I have my memory's almost full. Um, but yes, I come to the new button up here, I click create new, and you can do as many of these as you want, and you can come back up here, let's say, I saved an equation that I wanted um, on that one and then I come over here and we do a little drawing or not drawing but another equation um, and I come over here and I have something else saved up here that I want to go back to. Um, what's also cool in this is if I wanted to get a picture, this picture I just took from our online curriculum. We use iReady at our school, so I screenshot a picture, and I can insert it as a new layer, I can insert it as a file, a new file layer. Um, either way you do it, if I insert it as a new layer there, I can draw right over it. If I'm talking about angles, I can draw on it and show them the vertical angle. And again, this is good for virtual learning because you can actually, the kids can actually see the textbook with you you can draw on it just as you would if you were up in front of the classroom doing it on your document camera. So I really like that. And then also you can use the space down here for extra drawing. You can change the size of your pen down here. You can change the type of pen you want. You can draw shapes and um, yeah, there's nothing uh, limits you in this program. So you can make it a white background. Like I said, I like black. Um, just because my students said they preferred it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are a ton of things that you can do. I record from here, and I put it up on my Google Classroom, and the students who don't um, have access or their internet is um, giving them trouble during the class time, Whenever they do get a hotspot or they can um, get online, they can go on to the Google Classroom and get the lessons virtually there. So I really like Krita for these reasons. Check it out for yourself. It's totally free. It works for iOS and, and Windows. So check it out. I love it. Look uh, for the link in the description down below for the drawing pad and the Krita website. They're both free. And it's really made my math teaching and the student's ability to um, get support from me that much better. So I really recommend getting your drawing pad and your drawing software. Um, with that being said, the next material is going to be your lesson plan or your notes. To teach math online effectively, you're going to need to be prepared. So coming with your lesson already done is going to be a priority. Make sure you have everything ready. Um, so that when your students log into Zoom, you're not scrambling getting everything ready, you're, you're prepared, and it makes your students feel more relaxed and at ease knowing that you have prepared this thought out lesson for them. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to show you is the C cable. Um, so I did need an adapter because my drawing board, the XP pen drawing board, it has a, a USB plug at the end of it. So I needed to buy a USB adapter that would plug into the C end of my computer and the, um, the USB adapter can go into that. So I am not very technology savvy when it comes to, um, what the names of the cords are, so excuse me if I said that wrong, 
but um, you might need an adapter depending on what your laptop or whatever device you're using um, is capable of using. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. All right, so that does it for materials. The next thing that we're gonna jump into is the steps to teaching math effectively online in 2020. Okay, so let's get into those steps. All right, so teaching math effectively online, it can look very different for one person um, to the other. It just depends on what materials you have available to you as well as what your students have available, have available to them. Some students don't have internet, some students' internet doesn't work very well because um, the other family members are using the internet at that time. Some students are trying to log on and then their internet crashes. So there's always something and you need to be prepared for all of it being a teacher. So I want to go over some steps for you and I'm gonna give you some different variations in case things like that do happen. So step number one is to set up that point of contact. So whether you're using Zoom or whatever app that you're using, I'm just gonna go from what I have experience with. So um, having the links ready, shared out with however you communicate that with your students. I have a Google Classroom and I share out my links to the Zoom meeting at least a day before so the students know and are prepared and are ready to go. If you are not meeting live, so this is your variation, you can record yourself doing the lesson. Um, you can upload that video of you doing the lesson to your Google Classroom or whatever, again, whatever app that you're using. Um, but you can upload you doing the video so the students can watch your lesson and take notes so that they're able to do the work that you're assigning. So step number two is to practice with your hardware. So the worst thing you can do is get in front of your students and not know how to use the software or the hardware that you're using um, and you take 20 minutes of class trying to fumble around and it's just um, not as professional as to take a few minutes before you get in front of them to learn all of your materials. You never know who else is listening behind the camera when you're teaching face-to-face -face online. So you always wanna make sure that you're prepared. Do a practice run, ask somebody in your family, create a Zoom link and um, work out all of the kinks first before you get in front of your students. Right, so step number three is the actual lesson. So teaching the lesson online, um, make sure before you get in front of your students, make sure you set up the settings that you want in your Zoom. During the actual lesson, um, utilize things like the chat. So make sure they're being engaged. Say things like, hey, if you're, if you're with me, type a yes in the chat and make sure everybody is with you. Um, you can, if you have an assistant that's in your Zoom, you, you can make them the host for a little while and um, type little messages to each student to make sure that they're checking for understanding while you're doing the lesson. Also keep in mind that some students don't like to share through their microphone. They would rather type their answer versus say their answer. So you know your students more than anybody. So make sure if you have students like that to allow them to feel comfortable typing their answers instead of verbally saying their answers. Um, so yeah, just keep all of those things in mind for during the lesson. Okay, so and then step number four is to provide feedback. So as your lesson is going on, making sure that if they're answering the question, if you're having them turn in work um, or turn in their questions online, maybe it looks like them turning their cameras down or picking up their books and showing you their work. Maybe it looks like them taking a picture of their work and submitting it to an assignment on Google Classroom to be graded. Um, however that looks like, but provide immediate feedback. Um, I like to record the lessons on Zoom and then um, put the recordings online so that if students weren't able to log on at that time, that they're still able to see the lesson so that they can get that support when they do their work. But yeah, that's all for those steps. Um, I am gonna have a video next that is all about helping you with step number four and providing that feedback. Um, I'm going to do a video all about how to create a digital quiz um, that you can upload to Google Classroom in a flash and that can even grade it for you 
super quickly. So if you are excited about that, go ahead and comment down below. Make sure you let me know that you're excited for it and that you're ready. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you are notified when I upload that next video. I am so excited for this series, this digital learning, teaching math online in 2020 series. So that's it for this one. Don't forget to do something great today. And until the next one, the Math Dojo is out. Bye guys.